Hi folks, welcome to the next episode in our series on modern DevOps practices. Today we're going to talk about building software delivery pipelines. We're going to go through the tools, the processes, and the practices that you can use to build software delivery pipelines using Google Cloud Platform. My name is Sandeep and I'm a DevRel engineer at Google Cloud. Uh, I've been here for almost seven years minus some time away and I help teams adopt and optimize for cloud. Uh, you can always find me on Twitter at CRCSMNKY, that's Circus Monkey on Twitter, if you've got questions about DevOps, Google Cloud, or whatever that comes up. So many of you have probably seen the four key metrics already if you've been following our modern DevOps series. Uh, these are trailing indicators that we can use to measure software delivery performance. There are two speed metrics and two stability metrics. The speed metrics include deployment frequency, and how long it takes for a commit to go into production. And then the stability metrics include how many changes we ship that include failures and the time it, it takes to restore service after a failure has been detected. Now, when it comes to building software delivery pipelines, it has a pretty direct and somewhat indirect impact on all four of these key metrics. But again, these are just trailing indicators. So how do we know if we're making progress along that path? Well, the Dora research gives us a lot of detail around how to drive organizational performance using software delivery and operations. And one of the key capabilities included there is continuous delivery. And as you'd imagine, software delivery pipelines are a big part of any continuous delivery process. And those also include and sort of uh, are driven by a bunch of additional capabilities on the left side. So things like streamlined change processes, having additional autonomy, loosely coupled architecture, and so on. And ultimately, what we find is that these are great leading indicators of success, and they have a really positive impact in terms of reducing toil, the pain of deployments, and most importantly, burnout. Now, the software delivery process is typically comprised of three main buckets, the code, build, and run phases. Now, we know that this is really a coarse definition of software delivery. There's quite a bit more that goes into the delivery process. So let's explore that a little bit. Now, when we think of code, build, and run, if we map that to Google Cloud's offerings, we actually have a lot more that's going on there. So starting in the upper left around develop, we have cloud code. And then for building, testing, and packaging our artifacts, we have cloud build. And then there you can kind of take two paths. Uh, you can either deploy directly from Cloud Build or deploy using Cloud Deploy to things like GKE or Cloud Run. Or after building, you can just store your artifacts in Artifact Registry, Cloud Storage, or any other artifact mechanism like Artifactory, NPM, Maven, or GitHub. But ultimately, this is sort of the superset of that Code Build Run approach as it maps to Google Cloud. For this talk, I wanna start by focusing on just the building aspect, building, testing, and packaging using Cloud Build. So let's dig in a little bit. Cloud Build is a managed service and really a, a kind of a workflow mechanism for building, testing, packaging, and deploying all manner of software. Now, Cloud Build has a number of really important features, but I think the really key takeaways are the fact that it is a fully managed build service and it uses containers to execute its build pipelines. And you can pull in the source for your Cloud Build workflows from any upstream uh, source, whether it's Google Cloud Storage, Cloud Source Repos, GitHub, Bitbucket, or GitLab. And you can set these things to trigger based on you know, branch or tag commits or when you're just doing things like GitHub Actions. Now, the nice thing about Cloud Build is that is a, in many ways, it's a general purpose workflow mechanism, which means you can actually build whatever you want inside your build pipeline, as long as each build step can execute as a container. And you can deploy to a number of downstream services, whether it's deploying artifacts into Artifact Registry or to Cloud Deploy to hand off there, or directly to things like GCE VMs or Cloud Run, Cloud Functions, et cetera. Now, I mentioned that Cloud Build is a general purpose workflow mechanism in many ways, and what we find is that the use cases are pretty large. It's not just about building web applications, right? That process is obviously there, but you can actually use it for a variety of things. So starting with sort of general continuous integration and build capabilities, you can use it to run integration tests. 
You can actually use it for deployment automation and infrastructure as code as well. So you can run things like Terraform uh, pipelines using Cloud Build. And it actually has a number of benefits for doing data workloads or ML workloads as well. You could actually imagine building your Dataflow Java packaging there and then deploying that to the Dataflow service. So it has a lot of validity and utility for a lot of different services. Now, the Cloud Build workflow is pretty straightforward, right? You start with your source code, you get a workspace to build as part of the service, and then you define each of your build steps, again, as a container. And that final build step determines what happens to your built artifact, whether it gets deployed to a running service or it gets saved in some kind of a registry mechanism like Artifact Registry or Artifactory. And the nice thing about Cloud Build is that it allows you to really dig in and adopt one of the key Dora capabilities, which is loosely coupled architectures. Because Cloud Build is meant to be a very loosely coupled mechanism and a workflow approach. So you can run individual build steps as kind of isolated processes and then only hand off the components you want to to the next step. So you can imagine a very complex workflow that includes multiple cloud build pipelines or just has different sorts of branching and approaches for actually building your artifacts and getting them ready for, de for deployment or for production. And those pipelines, again, very robust approach here. So you can do things like kind of parallelize multiple test processes, like maybe you have certain integration tests that run in one, in one part of the pipeline and at the same time, maybe running other unit tests and then they can converge with both of those as a, as a waiting condition into that, that final step for deploying. And when it comes to triggering builds, you have a number of options to kick off that cloud build workflow process. You can have them driven by repository triggers, a manual approach, or even a scheduled approach. Or you could even get really fancy and use things like pub sub queues to drive your cloud build uh, pipelines to start. So you have a lot of flexibility and capability when it comes to how do we actually get our build started and then what do we do when it's done as well. Now here's an example of a very simple cloud build file and this defines a series of steps that actually take us through building a Docker container, pushing that container to a Docker registry, and then actually deploying that container to a GCE VM so we can create the VM and actually deploy using that container that we just built in the previous steps. And so this by itself would actually take a simple package, build it, and then deploy a VM with that container running on it right out the gate. And when we talk about those build steps, right, those container images that are your build steps, uh, Google provides a number of handy build container steps. So things like Docker commands, building Go applications, using the gCloud CLI, Gradle or Maven for Java applications, kubectl for orchestrating Kubernetes clusters or orchestrating Kubernetes applications, and even things like NPM. And that's just what Google provides. If you look at what the community has provided in our hosted repo, there are a number of additional containers that you can use as your build steps, or you could actually create your own and build them yourself. Now, here's another example of a cloud build pipeline that actually doesn't have a defined pipeline approach. So if you've just got application code and a Docker file, Google Cloud Build knows exactly what to do with that. It'll, it knows that you just want to simply build a Docker image out of this and it will follow some basic assumptions based on what you give it. And if you give it a tag, it'll actually put it in container registry for you. So even without a cloud build.yaml file, we can actually take a basic Docker image approach and build that container for you. And as I mentioned earlier, among the many use cases that cloud build supports, one of them is also this idea of using cloud builds workflow approach as a tool for doing infrastructure automation. So we actually have examples on the Google Cloud Docs around using things like GitOps and cloud build to automate infrastructure deployments that use Terraform. And so you could actually have deployments that you have a repo that's upstream that's got a cloud build.yaml file that specifies your Terraform workflow and not only does the plan, but also the apply process as well. So it actually automate a lot of the way you do infrastructure. And I like this approach quite a bit because it allows us to get out of the realm of manually or imperatively doing Terraform operations and instead making it come out of the service like Cloud Build can give us. 
Now here's an example of a cloud build.yaml file that just gives it simply does a Terraform plan operation. So you can see in the name field, that's the Terraform Docker image we're gonna use to execute this build step. And then as my arguments, I have an, a little script there that's actually gonna tell me what to do based on the environment I want to deploy in. And ultimately, this is gonna run Terraform plan based on the repo that it came from. Now, building is obviously just one part of the software supply chain, So, but it's a really critical part, right? A lot of the work really converges around getting that source in, building those artifacts to get prepared for deploying and ultimately running on a compute resource. So when we talk about the other steps in that flow, our next thing we want to cover in this talk is around storing using artifact registry. And this is where we store artifacts, as you'd imagine. Now, Artifact Registry is a scalable, reliable, and a sort of a secure space to store your artifacts. And those artifacts can be many things. They don't have to just be container images. They could also be Java packages, Go packages, Python packages, or even node modules. Uh, and the list kind of continues to grow on and on. So think of this as the place to store any artifact that you want to use later on. Now, the artifact management capabilities kind of come into three main buckets. There is the storage, analysis, and then the sort of delivery aspect as well. And it's all done in a way that maps really well to the rest of Google Cloud's infrastructure. So Artifact Registry is tied closely into Cloud Build, and it works really, really well when you're trying to pull those things like Docker images into Kubernetes clusters or into Cloud Run services as well. And it's a great way to kind of build a dependency management approach that we'll talk about in a little bit as well. So when we talk about the artifact delivery aspect, artifacts that are stored in artifact registry can be pulled in from any downstream service, Cloud Functions, Cloud Run, GKE and GK Autopilot, as well as Compute Engine. And as I mentioned earlier, it really is kind of a universal artifact management approach. We think of artifact registry as a single place to or organize not only, again, just container images, but also your language packages and your software dependencies as well. So as you think about bringing your dependencies into GCP and hosting them there, artifact registry is a great place to do that. Now, when we talk about the storage aspects, there are a lot of finely fine grained controls you can exert on top of the storage mechanism. So there's a lot you can do with identity and access management about who can store and who can pull from artifact registry down to even individual you know, repos. So you could say for our Docker containers, we only want to allow our cloud run service or our GKE services to pull those Docker images from our Docker storage repo inside of artifact registry. Or you could actually do the same thing in terms of your application dependencies. No bare application dependency could be pulled into a compute. It could only be pulled in by another cloud build or another artifact registry component. And with the storage aspects, we also try to make sure that your artifacts are really close to where your applications are going to be running. So we have regional repositories you can deploy all across the globe in any of our regions so that your artifacts are really close to where they need to be for quick delivery. Now, analysis is something that we talk about a lot, but we don't actually get to spend a ton of time on it. We won't go into too much depth today, but ultimately what we find with the software supply chain is that dependencies can be their own potential vector for attack or things like container images as well. So what we do as part of Artifact Registry is that we have automated analysis capabilities. So we're constantly checking all of those packages your Docker images, and all of your language artifacts to make sure that there are no known vulnerabilities contained within them. And if there are, we will highlight that and show that to you as quickly as possible. And you can actually plug this into other existing tools to expand on those detected vulnerabilities and take different actions that you may need to, such as blocking deployment for any software packages or container images that have known vulnerabilities in them. Now, I mentioned this a little bit earlier, but I want to expand on it just a little bit. When we talk about artifact registry, and this kind of fits in with cloud build and the loosely coupled approach, you could have an ability where we could say, instead of building our huge monolithic application in one build workflow, we can actually do a loosely coupled approach and instead build individual capabilities as their own language packages, and then use those as dependencies for other cloud build workflows so that what happens is you have shared code, it gets built by cloud build, cloud build, 
and then deployed and stored as an artifact, right? So that dependency is stored. And then you may have application code that pulls in that artifact as your cloud build pipeline and then proceeds to the process. And this loosely coupled approach lets teams iterate at their own pace and maintain their own sort of release velocity without slowing things down. And it allows us to narrow our view when it comes to artifact analysis. So that if we find a vulnerability, we know it's not across the entire application, it's just in this one dependency that was built in a separate process. Now here's an example of a cloud build file that actually stores an artifact into artifact registry. Now I've skipped over some of the setup steps here and ultimately what I had to do was set up artifact registry with a Maven repo and then include the Maven repo components in my in my uh, Maven build file. But once I've done that, I can actually create a simple cloud build.yaml that can do steps like running my tests, packaging of my artifact, and then deploying that artifact to the artifact registry as well. So we have all of that kind of built into the platform and it makes this process super easy, right? We've actually spread out some of the complexity here by putting some of the details in the in the POM, in the Maven POM file, and some of the complexity in this cloud build YAML file. But it makes things really clean and easy to evaluate and understand. Now that's all I wanted to cover today. I know this was a quick tour through building software delivery pipelines, but we wanted to give you a sense of what's possible with cloud build and artifact registry. See you all in the next episode.